Welcome back friends. In this video, we'll be talking about the primary and secondary antibody. So this is more of a technical term because uh, this is not actually used for other types like immunoglobulin G, antibody E, antibody A, not like that. These are a technical term, more often they are used in different biological techniques. So what they actually mean? So the classification of primary or secondary antibody depends on what kind of work this antibody is actually doing. So for that understanding, we need to know where exactly we use antibody in uh, experiments and other, other purposes. Usually, there are two different roles of antibody that we use in experiments. Role number one is that the direct identification, the direct identification of markers. That markers can be of different type. That marker can be a genetic marker, usually phenotypic marker also, and also other structural markers out on the surface of the cell, and so. So direct identification and second purpose that we use is the immunohistochemistry or immunotechniques or immunoblotting, uh, I must say immunoblotting techniques or immunohistochemical techniques. So these are the two ways that we use uh, this antibody a lot and also in, uh, in blotting techniques we also use to antibody. So that is the immunoblotting because we use antibody, that is the term immunoblotting comes in. In also protein blotting, that is also called the western blotting, we use antibodies. So example of such is western blotting, let me write western blotting. The example here is ELISA, radioimmunoassay, enzyme-linked immunoassay and all these things. So, so if, if, what are the functions that we do actually here? So normally in case of the detection, direct detection of the markers, that markers we usually need to detect for the disease, they are disease markers. So the marker for disease, what kind of disease we mark here? The disease we are talking about, the disease can be cancer, the disease can be, let's say, uh, it, it is cancer, it is Alzheimer's disease, it is Parkinson's disease and so on. So in this disease actually, direct antibody is found very much effective to mark the diseased cell, to mark the specific section of that cell, specific moiety of that cell that contains the signature sequence that is the reason for the disease. So that's why in all these cases in cancer markers and also Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, what we know, if we have cell, they have particular, let's say in the cell membrane surface, they have a particular structure or moiety that is made by the glyco, uh, proteoglycans here. And this antibody can actually go and sense that. So that antibody, remember the antibody which is directly sensing the chemical structure of this extracellular matrix of the cell, that antibody is directly interacting. As the antibody is directly interacting with the target, we call it primary antibody. So in the primary antibody, it is directly interacting, direct interaction is occurring. In the second thing, when you use the antibodies in immunoblotting techniques like western blotting, ELISA blotting, all these techniques, what we do here, let's say this is the slide for example, this is the slide and we have our cell, we have cell down here. Right. So let's say this is the particular structure we need to find, for example, or this is the protein that is present, the protein of our interest in a blot, in a, in a nitrocellular membrane in western blotting. So that moiety is our desire and the antibody is going to interact with that moiety. So if our antibody, let's say, we add first antibody that is interacting. Whatever antibody interacting first will be termed as, remember, the primary antibody. So this is a primary antibody, okay, primary antibody. Now we design another type of antibody for this immunoblotting. So primary antibody is required both in immunoblotting as well as in direct identification. But in immunoblotting, we require a different type of new kind of I mean, uh, I mean antibody. Now these antibodies develop against the FC portion of the primary antibody. So that is the most important point. It is developed against the FC portion of the primary antibody. 
So if this is the FC portion, remember this is the FC portion and the primary antibodies FC portion is now targeted by the FAB portion of secondary antibody. Okay, now why we require this secondary antibody here? We require secondary antibody because the secondary antibody sometimes are linked with enzymes. Let's say this is the enzyme which is linked. So the secondary antibody is now linked with an enzyme or some, some chemical molecules, mostly enzymes. Now either this enzyme can break down a substrate and give coloration or mo most of the cases it can break down a substrate and provide some color. So let's say we are doing a whole experiment in a well. If we are zooming in here and the well is very small, very tiny, this whole process is going on. We add primary antibody, then we add secondary antibody, which is anti-primary antibody against the FC portion of a primary antibody, which is attached with the protein. Now that protein will convert a substrate that we provide here into a colored compound. So the whole, this is a solution, the whole solution was colorless. Now after this process, after the completion of the process, we see some color. So by looking at it, what we can say that we designate or find our moiety present here. If there is no moiety, there will, won't be any primary antibody to bind, there won't be any secondary antibody to bind and there won't be any breakdown of product to produce color. So it remains colorless. So to find the presence of a particular chemical moiety or the presence of a, a chemical like you know presence of a protein or structure, we can use this immunoblotting technique. And in that case, we need the secondary antibody most of the time, which is protein attached antibodies for this process to work. Okay, so that in a sense is primary and secondary antibody. Now secondary antibody is anti-primary antibody. For example, if we develop the primary antibody in rabbit, in rabbit, then in the second time, we will develop the antibody against rabbit. So it should be, the secondary antibody should be anti-rabbit antibody and it should be developed in somewhere other host, like let's say goat. You cannot develop anti-rabbit antibody in rabbit. So in that case, we need to develop in goat. So the secondary antibody here will be developed in goat and that will be an anti-rabbit antibody. So that kind of it guys. I hope that video helps you. If you like the video and found helpful, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video in social network, comment on it. Thank you.